Come on and clap those hands and thank him. Come on, thank him. Thank your king, thank your king. Thank God for our praise and worship. We want to, I just want to share some things uh, in the word tonight again. I'm so grateful for all of our guests that are being here. So um, in the beginning of the year to our guests in January, um, we have what we call a 21-day consecration. And it's where we set aside time to come to the church and pray and we study and actually uh, we'll be here Friday from like 11 at night until about 6 or 7 in the morning. And we'll just do a full-on service and we study and it's our way of finding out from God how to please him better. So we do it at the beginning of the year and we get enough instructions and we get enough word and we get enough encouragement to kind of make it through the rest of the year. Um, so I want to share some things tonight to the congregation, some things that the Lord put on our heart regarding this 21 days and our clock is not working. So I need somebody to kind of just, uh, keep me in line with the time to let me know when it's like 8:45 or so, cause I don't want to be very long. We're going to be back here tomorrow, um, at seven o'clock in prayer. Um, I want to praise God for all of the workers that helped tonight and helped last night. Thank you so much. Thank you in the midst of the rain and everything, and uh, thank you for pressing your way and helping us uh, make this a pleasurable night. So um, let's go to our first slide. So the word of God in Isaiah 58 and 6, uh, part of what we're doing in a 21 day, and definitely to our new members that maybe this is the first time you've gone on this journey, so I want to educate you on what God is saying for the year and what he's doing we're talking about being legacy, meaning understanding that God have quickened us and have given us an understanding that we belong to him. And because we belong to him, we're starting to own that. We're trying to admit that. We're trying to walk like that. We're trying to walk as legacy. In other words, everything that God is, it's a whole lot of work, but we're trying to be as that. And the first thing that God is, is love. Somebody answer the question, what's love got to do with it? everything because everything about God is love and anything and everything that we do for God the base of what God does is love hardship does not come from God that comes from the devil I need somebody to say amen God is love and God tries and God will do things like he will put people on on his saints heart to be able to show that he is love and that he cares and that he never forgets you and you're never walking through this earth alone. So we do this 21 day consecration, which is where we deny ourselves of a meal. We just have one meal a day. Um, we're staying away from sweets and starches and it's basically like a Daniel fast. I think they got it. It's another name out there. It's a true fast like Kino or something. Well, I don't know. They always got some fast going on you. Some new diet, the Eloki diet. What is it? We just eat Yoki. I mean, it's just, there's all kinds of stuff out there. So anywho, there's one that's similar to this. But um, the scripture says in Isaiah 58 and 6, and if you got your cell phone, you can pull it up in the word or you can look up here. But if you got your Bible, you always want to look up scriptures for yourself. You never want to take my word for it. I'm going to give it to you, but you need to see it for yourself. You need to read it for yourself because you want to know God for you. I'm not going to be with you at your school, at your job. I ain't going home with you. I don't know where you live. I don't know your circumstances. I don't know who you're with. I don't know if you're married. I don't know any of those things. But God knows everything, so you want to know God yourself. Say amen. You want to have your own knowledge of him. You want to read for yourself so you can know him for yourself because when somebody asks you about God, you want to be able to answer for yourself. So in the word of God in Isaiah 56, this is a question and I need the family of this is Pentecost because I need to teach this really to you. Even though we do this every single year, if ever there's a year and there's a time I need you to grab this, I need you to hear it and I need you to follow it. W-H-O-L-L-Y. I need you to follow it wholly. I don't need you to see this as a tradition. I don't need you to see this as just another 21 days because if you do that, you're going to miss what God wants to do in this season. But you have to grab it to understand that last year in 2018 anybody that lived perfectly saved perfectly holy made no mistakes last year then maybe this fast don't apply to you but if there was any drippings any debris that you wrestled with last year then this applies to you now is anybody here that 
Yeah, don't get it twisted. Don't ever let the devil make you think that it's just another fast. Fasting is the way you bring you under subjection to God. The devil is not your enemy. You are your enemy. And you are your enemy because the Bible said every man is tempted when he is drawn away. Work the scripture with me from his own and so anything, I got to say it again, and I need somebody other than Etiano to be here. The Bible said that every man is tempted when he's drawn away from his own and in everything that you've done, anything that you've allowed yourself to do that was not pleasing to God, that's what you war with. That's what you have to die to. You will hear me say this year more than I've ever admitted and I've ever taught before. You've got to put you on the chopping block and you've got to bring you out of you in order for God to get the glory. We cannot walk in legacy when we're alive in our struggles. We cannot walk in legacy when you're not sure if you're called or not. You cannot walk in legacy if you're doubting if you're going to give up the world or not. It ain't going to work. So fasting helps you to die to your struggle. Don't get it twisted because religious people would like to think that fasting moves God. God moves all the time. I'm going to say that again. God is moving all the time. He don't need your fast for him to move. You need it so you can feel the move because you're too alive. So what is the acceptable fast? He said, is not this the fast that I have chosen? What is it to do? To loose the bands of wickedness. What we are not going to be is we're not going to be a church that act like we got it together. We don't have it all together. We die daily. There's struggles all the time. There's issues all the time. Now we are growing, say amen, and we are developing and we are maturing, but you have to recognize when there are strongholds that still pull at you. So he said, is not this the fast that I have chosen? What does it need to do? To loose the bands of wickedness. I need some wickedness out of my life. I need some stuff. Now, I know I got guests here, but I got members here, too, and I need you to act like I'm talking to you. I need bands of wickedness to be destroyed. I am so serious about walking in legacy that I'm going to walk as close to the God-like character as I can, and it's going to take him loosing bands of wickedness. Wickedness is not just your drugs, marijuana, and all those other things that you might indulge in. Wickedness can be rejection because you're not even able to receive love because your mind has a band of wickedness, of rejection. Wickedness can be your insecurities that you're not able to mingle with other people. Let me keep on breaking it down. Wickedness can be your racism and your prejudice that you're not even able to bond with people. I got to work in all kind of ways. Wickedness comes in all kind of forms. And I'm going to make this real clear right now. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? I'm going to make this real clear right now. If you don't have the ability to sit with our brothers and sisters and hug and serve on anybody and everybody, it's a form of wickedness on you that you can't love everybody. I need some praise up in this house. When you can't hug anybody and everybody, there's something that's holding you. So we have to lose the bands of wickedness to undo heavy burdens, heavy burdens. Many people aren't even able to do what they need to do in God because they got too much heaviness on them, too much weight. Let me help break that down. You can be burdened with situations that you can't even control. You could be burdened with unsaved loved ones. You could be burdened with what other people are going through. You could be burdened with your past that God said is over, but the devil will never let you move in your freedom. He said, I want to undo wickedness and to undo heavy burdens and to let the what go free? Talk back to me. To let everybody what? To let the what? Talk back to me. To let the oppressed, and I'm going to add depressed free. Got to go. I need to work this, and I need y'all to stay alive with me. This is not an ordinary fast. I want it to be spe specific. I want it to be intentional, and I want it to be deliberate. Ain't no more torment where I'm happy for 21 days, and on the 24th day, here come a demon of depression again. I need this demon to go and never see him again. Shout hallelujah. Let's get some praise up in this house. And God is saying, that's the fast that I am choosing to let the oppressed go free and that ye break, and that ye break.
break. I don't think we could believe we really can't be free. And that we break every single yoke. Get them up off of me. Shout hallelujah. And that we break every yoke. Next slide. Here we go. He said, and is it not? Watch this. And is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? It's part of the fast. He said, is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? Is it not that thou bring the poor that are cast out into thy house? It's part of the fast. And so I need y'all to work with me, church, because I'm telling you we are on the brink of something great. We are on the brink of God doing something magnificent in our lives. And he's saying, this year, Tammy, I'm choosing this fast. And I'm saying, if you do this, if you serve with me, I've got greatness coming. He said, is it not to deal thy bread? So it's no longer about signing up to see if I can help somebody. It's a must because it goes with my consecration that I help somebody less fortunate than me. Wake up, church, and act like this is our assignment. This is what I want. This is the people I'm calling. This is what I'm able to do. He said, is it not to do thy bread? Is it not to bring the poor that is cast out? He said, and when thou seest the naked, it is to cover him, and that thou hide not thy flesh from thy own. It's not, it's, it's not for you to be about you, but I need you to be about somebody else. The greatest death, and I say this spiritually, the greatest denial of us Honey, and it's hard and it's a long journey for God to take us there. Is when you realize that your salvation is more about blessing others than you. Let me say that again. When you begin to accept that your legacy, then Jesus so loved the world. And God can begin to expand you beyond you. Salvation is is for you to be a light to so many others. Salvation and his blessings that he put on you is so that you can be a blessing to so many others. So here's our purpose of our fast. Next slide. So here's the purpose. He said, I'm going to loose the bands of wickedness. This is the purpose of this fast, 21 days. I'm going to undo heavy burdens. This is the purpose. He said, I'm going to free you from oppression. Yokes are going to be destroyed. He said, the purpose is I want you to do for the less fortunate. I want you to feed the less fortunate. I want you to clothe them. This is the purpose. So there is no sign up as if they already got help. Whatever I can do, wherever I can find my hands to do, I'm going to do it because it's part of my consecration. Okay, I'm going to say it again. Some people can be here because they're not working or their schedules allow them to get here and serve. That's their part. Some people say, I can't be here, but I can help set up. And you set up things and you get things together because that's my part. Some people say, I can't set up. I can't even be there to serve, but I can help clean up because that's my part. Some people say, I'm out of state. I can't get there. I can't do anything, but I can sow. I can give into some things because that's my part. But I'm doing something to let God know I'm fulfilling my consecration. And then you got some people that say, I can do it all. I can be there. I can set up. I can help serve. I can break down. I can help clean up. Plus, I'm giving. Because it's part of my consecration. Now, he said, now this is the purpose. So I ask you, don't take it lightly, church. I'm asking you, don't treat it like a traditional, I'll get there when I can. It's just another 21 days. I'm begging you not to because I promise you he's going to pay. And I promise you there's going to be a mounting in the Holy Spirit. I promise you there's going to be a strengthening in the Holy Spirit. That God is saying, as you do, I'm going to bless you. Here we go, next slide. Watch this. He said, now when you do this, if you do it like this, he said, now here's the results. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth slowly. Thank you for correcting me. Speedily. And thy righteousness shall go behind thee. Talk back to me. She'll go behind me. Before thee and the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah shall be thy re-reward. The NIV version said, then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing shall hallelujah.
God said, if you want to try me, do what I'm asking you to do in this consecration. See if I won't heal your body. And see if I won't do it quickly. He said, then there will be a healing quickly. And then your righteousness, hallelujah, will go before you. And the glory of the Lord, thank you, Jesus, will be your rear guard. Next scripture, next slide. He says, so now then you will call on me. 2019, church, we don't know what we're facing this year. 2019, we don't know what's before us. Just like last year, we don't know what's going to happen this year. But, honey, if I could get 21 days on a jump start with God and put some time in with him, put some prayer in with him, put some serving in with him, he said, then you're going to call on me. Hallelujah. And the Lord is not going to hear you. Y'all better correct me, and the Lord going to ignore you. He going to turn his back on you. Hallelujah. He said, then the Lord will answer and you will cry for help. And the Lord will say, I'm right here. I got you. Oh, I need some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, and if you do away with the yoke of depression from the point of the finger and the malicious talk. Next slide. He said, and the Lord shall guide thee continually. Hallelujah. 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 I know, I'm talking personal for a minute, like I know in life stuff happens that you just can't explain, you can't fix it. Stuff happens. And I've had my share of stuff happening. But as long as I know he'll guide me, as long as I know he got me by my hand, then I'm good. He said, you give me those 21 days right, and I'm going to guide you sometimes. I'm going to guide you every now and then. I'm going to stop guiding you by March. By April, I'm going to forget about you. I'm going to guide you all year long as long as you do what I ask in 21 days. I need some folk to get happy to understand what he's promising us. And satisfy thy soul in drought and make fat thy bones and thou shalt be like a water garden, like a spring of water whose waters fill not. The NIV version says the Lord will guide you always. Here's the best part. And he will satisfy your needs in a sun scorched land. Meaning when things get so hard for you, he said, I'm going to see about your needs. When things get so rough for you, he said, I'm going to see about your needs. And then I'm going to strengthen your body. How many need God to strengthen their bodies? He said, I'm going to strengthen your body. And you will be like a well watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. Next slide. And they that shall be of thee. Here we go. We're ready to build. The legacy to build. He said, and they that shall, that, that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. And thou shalt raise up the foundation of many generations. And thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach. Hallelujah. The restore of paths to dwell in. Church 2019, we are being legacy and we are building legacy. We are making a way for other people. We are making a path for other people. We are making light for other people. Last slide. Here we go. So then what are my results of the fast? My result is that his light is going to be upon me. So I don't have to worry about being consumed by darkness. I don't have to be worried about confused of what to do when trouble come my way because God's going to shine a light on me. What else is God going to do? He's going to restore my health. And I don't know about you, but you need to write those sicknesses down and put them on the altar. And in 21 days, I'm believing God for healing. Now you can doubt your healing if you want to. You can say, I've done that before. Nothing happened if you want to, but I'm believing God. 2019, I'm going to be legacy. And that legacy is watch me get healed. Watch me get healed. And his righteousness be upon you. And then his glory. And let me help you understand what that means. When the presence of God is upon you, when the glory of God rests upon you, there's only so much the enemy can do to you. Hallelujah. Because, because God's presence is around you. And the enemy can only go so far with you because there's a presence that he knows I can't go but so far. And the Lord said that his glory shall be upon you and the Lord will guide you. Nobody knows what they're going to face this year. Nobody. Nobody knows what state of condition, mind, mentally, physically, your family, your finances, your home. You have no idea 
what shape you're going to be in at the end of this year. But God declared unto us this fast. He said, I'm calling it intentionally. And I need you to hear it, and I need you to adhere to it intentionally. He said, I'm going to guide you all year long. And not only all that, but I'm going to guide you, and I'm going to satisfy your needs. So whether you're starting from a need of a simple thing or a great thing, whether it's simple or it's great, God said, I'm going to supply your needs. I am a God that I promise I will take care of your needs. I'm talking to my brothers and my sisters. My brothers and my sisters that are visiting us this time, I don't know what all you need, but God promised I will supply your needs and I will see about your needs. And sometimes all it takes is just asking the Lord, see about me. I need some people that had to say that. I need some people that know God will satisfy your needs and then strengthen our bodies. Strengthen our bodies. God, get a wind up under us. Sometimes, I think it was Paul, he said that my spirit is willing, but my flesh is weak. Sometimes you can have all the desire to do the things of God, but your body is just weak. 2019, I want my body to match my mind, to match my desire, to match my ambition, to match my zeal. He said, I'm going to strengthen your body, and then I'm going to use you. Hallelujah. Because everybody can't build the kingdom of God. But those of us that know we have legacy over our lives, he said, you will be legacy and you will build legacy. And we will prepare ways and we will open up doors. This season, we're pr putting our families on the altar. And you're putting people that's been on your heart, you're putting them on the altar. And all you're going to be is light. And as you follow God, God will begin to create a pathway for others to be able to see their way out. You are a repairer of the breach. You're preparing a path for others to see. Everyone stand to your feet, and we're going to pray and get ready to go. I just appreciate my brothers and sisters that are here tonight. To the family of this is Pentecost, I'm begging you, do not, do not, do not take this fast lightly. I'm going to have uh, Sister Tracy make sure she send this out to everybody because I want us to understand God is saying, this is a fast I'm choosing. Hallelujah. He said, we're going to destroy some yokes. Hallelujah. Some bodies are going to get healed. Hallelujah. I'm going to shine my light on some people. Y'all, listen, there's a brightness that's going to come upon us. There's a glory that's going to rest upon us. He said, now all I ask you to do is keep seeing about those that need me. Show my love. The Lord put a charge on this house that not only open your arms, but open your arms wide. Hallelujah. There's more that we could do this. It got to open your heart wide because that's how the blessing is going to come to this house. This house and every person that opens up their heart, God said, that's how you're going to get the blessing. It's because that's what I've declared as the assignment of this house. And so we're believing God prayerfully. We're seeking God. I got my own. Somebody asked me, you know, Pastor Martin, what do you want for your birthday? It was my mama. What do you want for your birthday? I said, a half a million dollars. Daddy, stop. I said, I'm not playing. I want our facility to be able to have a kitchen 24 hours a day, to have showers, to have a real facility. I need y'all to believe it with me. I'm not playing. I said, I need a half a million. I need you to say something realistic. I said, that is my reality. Now, I just concluded, if it takes faith to get $100, then faith is faith is faith. Give me a half a million so we can get this done. To all of our guests, there's a little land right there on the other side of the parking lot, and that's our land. And we've already put an amount down for a prefab because our desire is that we can have a facility. The church is good, but we want a different facility that we can have a full-on kitchen so we can serve every single day. We can have hot meals that anybody can come. We want showers. And... <laughs> Hallelujah. How many know he's able? Y'all got to pray with me because it's going to take one mind for him to do it. Let that glory shine on us. Let that glory shine on us. So we declare it because I know our assignment. Uh, when we were setting up and getting things together and, and I was just in here by myself. And when I just saw the saints coming in, I saw our brothers and sisters coming in. And I just saw the different saints greeting and helping people get settled and I was just so broken because it's one thing to have a vision 
But it's another thing when God sends people to fulfill the vision. It's just, it's just a whole nother thing. I was sharing with one of our newer saints. I said, I post things. I said, I know the Bible says that what you do in secret, I'll reward you openly. I said, and I don't post these things to brag, sort of. I don't put, post these things to brag. I said, it's because I want to put it out there so more people that understand that kind of ministry will be drawn. Yeah. Hallelujah. So we can draw more laborers and we can draw more people that get it. And they said, that's me. That's, that's who I want to be. That's what I want to do. So if you could grab your brother, your sister by the hand, and we're going to get ready to pray, and then we're going to dismiss you. It's 845. I want our guests to be able to get a good night's sleep and rest, and I want them to be a part of this worship. Father, in the name of Jesus, this hand that I hold, my brother, my sister, I thank you, Father, because you are good. And, Father, while circumstances may not be what we want, they could be worse, I thank you for our life. I thank you, God, for my brother and my sister, life of the hand that I hold. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your gentleness. And Lord, I thank you for breathing on my brother and my sister. Thank you for breathing life into them. Father, thank you for even letting them want to be in this service. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. May your love be all around them. Jesus, Lord, may your love be all around my brother and my sister. May peace follow my brother and my sister in the name of Jesus. Father, I come against every tormentor of the mind. I come against every tormentor of the heart. But Lord, I just ask that you overshadow my brother with your love. Overshadow him with your tender kindness. In the name of Jesus, speak to my brothers. Only you know how, Father. And minister to his need in the name of Jesus. Minister to the need of my sister. Father, I ask that angels would visit her even in her dreams. Even in the dreams. Father, I know about see Kian Nelo Shondoba. Guess Kian Nelobaha. Allow angels to speak, Lord. Father, I ask that you dispatch angels even in this building, all in our dining room in the name of Jesus. Father, may peace be upon them in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, may they have rest in their hearts and rest in their minds in the name of Jesus. And Father, I declare by this time, the next year, Lord, our brother and our sister will be whole. I declare in the name of Jesus, they will be completely healed. I declare that they will have shelter and housing in the name of Jesus. I declare that every need will be met in the name of Jesus. I declare victory over my brother and my sister's life. I declare victory in the name of Jesus. We rebuke every generational curse in the name of Jesus. We rebuke every evil word that have been spoken against them. Devil, you are a liar. They shall be great and they shall be healed and they shall be whole in the name of Jesus. And now, Lord, anoint this house. Anoint this house, Jesus. 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 Anoint it, Yenobasi. May your glory rest here, May your glory be in the parking lot in the name of Jesus. May your glory be up and down 47th Avenue. May your glory be up and down 47th Street in the mighty name name of Jesus dispatch angels in the four corners of our parking lot in the mighty name of Jesus we declare that there will be a light that will hover over this building in the mighty name of Jesus may your glory rest here and may there be no lack may there be no lack and so, Father, we declare and we thank you for our new building. We thank you, Lord, that we are moving in your charge. We thank you that we are moving in our assignment. We thank you, Lord, that you're going to provide our building in the name of Jesus, that we may follow your instructions, that we may follow your word in the name of Jesus. But, Father, we are willing, so we thank you in advance that you're going to send supernatural wealth to supply our need, that, Father, you are sending the donations in the name of Jesus, and that there will be no lack we declare it in Jesus name in Jesus name help me say in Jesus name it is done help me say in Jesus name it is done in Jesus name it is done help me say it in Jesus name it is done come on and clap those hands 
Come on and give the Lord some praise. We're going to let you go. We just want to leave you with he's You are good. Come on. Good. Help me, y'all. Oh, you are. Help me, y'all. Oh, give me Mike, Sister Tracy. You are good. good. Oh, and you never let me go.